In this video, I'm going to cover what may be the worst engines you'll find on the market today. They're in everything from small hatchbacks to luxury SUVs across multiple brands. So if you're car shopping new or used, this list could save you from making a very expensive mistake. First up, the Stellantis 1.2 PureTech. At first glance, it looks like a modern engine. Small, turbocharged, efficient. But under the surface, it's a headache waiting to happen. The main issue? The wet timing belt. Instead of being dry and separate, this belt runs in hot engine oil. Over time, the oil attacks the rubber. The belt breaks down, little pieces of rubber clog oil passages, starve the engine of lubrication and eventually destroy it. Owners have also reported oil consumption problems, turbo failures, and expensive repairs often way too early in the car's life. Now here's the kicker. This engine isn't just in one or two models, it's everywhere. Peugeot 108, 208, 2008, 301, 308, 3008, 408, 5008, Rifter. Then we move to Citroën. Here, it's fitted in the C1, the C3, the C3 Aircross, the C3 XR, the C4 Cactus, the C4 Picasso, the C5 Aircross, and the Berlingo Van between Peugeot and Citroën. That's already millions of cars equipped with this engine. Next, the Stellantis Premium brand, DS Automobiles. The DS3, the DS3 Crossback, the DS4S, and the DS7 Crossback. Then we have Opel and Vauxhall. Here you'll find it in the Corsa F, the Crossland X, the Grandland X, the Maka, and the Combo Van. And uh, finally, the unexpected brands. Jeep uses the 1.2 PureTech in the Avenger and the new Compass. Fiat has it in the 600. Lancia brought it into the latest Ypsilon. Alfa Romeo uses it in the new Junior. And even Toyota, with the Pro-A City ban, relies on the same engine because it shares a platform with Stellantis. That's the reach of this little 1.2 PureTech spreading from French hatchbacks all the way to Jeeps, Fiats, and even Toyotas. So here's the takeaway. The Stellantis 1.2 PureTech may seem like a small, modern engine, but the problems it brings from timing belt issues to high repair bills are serious. And because it's used across so many brands and models, it's not easy to avoid. If you're considering a car with this engine, make sure you know the risks. It could save you from major trouble down the road. Next up, the Jaguar Land Rover 2.0 Ingenium Diesel. This engine was supposed to be a modern replacement for the old Ford source diesels. But instead, it's been linked to failures, timing chain stretch, EGR problems, high oil consumption, and in some cases, catastrophic engine damage. Where will you find it? Pretty much across the Jaguar and Land Rover lineup from 2015 onwards. On the Jaguar side, XE Sedan, XF Sedan and Wagon, F-Pace SUV, um, and even the E-Pace compact SUV for Land Rover. It shows up in the Range Rover Evoque, the Discovery Sport, the Range Rover Velar, and even some versions of the Defender. So whether you're looking at a Jaguar Executive Sedan or a Land Rover SUV, Chances are high you'll run into this 2.0 Ingenium diesel, and the risks are not small. Repairs can cost thousands, and reliability is a serious concern. Now let's move to Ford and their 1.0 EcoBoost. On paper, it's a clever little three-cylinder turbo. This one even won Engine of the Year awards when it launched. A tiny three-cylinder turbo designed to give you performance and fuel economy in one neat package. But reality tells another story. Owners have reported overheating, coolant leaks, cracked cylinder heads, and in some cases, complete engine failure. And remember, this isn't some niche 
motor. Ford put it in everything. Here's the list. Fiesta, Focus, EcoSport, Puma, Mondeo, C-Max, B-Max, and even the Transit Courier and Transit Connect vans. That means city cars, family hatchbacks, SUVs, and even work vans were all fitted with the same 1.0 EcoBoost. And while some engines do fine, too many haven't leaving owners with massive repair bills. Uh, a small engine, but potentially a very big problem. And finally, let's talk about Mazda's Skyactiv-D diesels. Mazda promised a clean, efficient diesel, no need for complex after-treatment systems like AdBlue. But the reality? Oil dilution, injector problems, turbo issues, and in some cases, complete engine failure. Where can you find it? The 2.2 uh, Skyactiv-D was fitted in. Mazda 3. Mazda 6, CX-3, CX-5, and CX-8 SUVs. The smaller 1.5 Skyactiv-D went into the Mazda 2, the Mazda 3, and the CX-3. So whether it's a, a family sedan, a sporty hatchback, or one of Mazda's popular SUVs, the Skyactiv-D has been there. And uh, unfortunately, so have the issues. While some owners had trouble-free experiences, too many faced costly repairs, which is why this engine family earns a spot on the list of avoid at all costs. So there you have it. Different brands, different designs, but one thing in common, they've all left countless drivers with big headaches and even bigger repair bills. If you're shopping for a used or new car, remember these engines, do your homework, check the service history, and know the risks because sometimes what looks like a good deal can turn into a nightmare if you found this useful make sure to hit the like button drop your thoughts in the comments and subscribe if you want more stories like this thank you for watching thank you for your attention as always have a wonderful day